I am so excited for you all to listen to the conversation that I had with Janice Townsend. Janice is a longtime friend. She and I and my wife and her husband, Matt, have known each other for 13 years now, (laughs) 12, 13 years. And Janice is a serial entrepreneur. She launched a coffee shop, oh man, back in 2010, 2011. I think it was 2010. And she built it up. She had different variations of it. She tried to franchise it. She opened second locations, third locations. She stopped franchising. Then she started coming back to a a firmer ground where she could have more control and, and have a second location. She's built up buildings and and she started other ventures and she's done all sorts of things and then just last august she sold two of her businesses and so she's kind of like out she she'd gotten out of some of the other businesses and she's totally out now and so i love this conversation i got to have it in person and it was a, a beautiful moment to reconnect with her. And this is a very honest conversation. And this is really why I started this podcast is because in work is about the things that we do in work to be successful, but it's also about the inner work that we must do in order to be our full selves, be our whole selves, and also to find success. It's really fascinating to me. I've seen over and over and over again, there are people that can reach really high heights and then they come tumbling down because they haven't done the inner work. And Janice has. In this conversation, not only does she tell us what she's been up to since August, but she also gives us an insight into the benefits and the challenges of selling your companies. And she gives us a really good picture into what our lives can be like when we start to do that inner work as business owners. And I'm so excited for you to meet her. So without further ado, let's get to the chat with Janice. So... How's life? You're like, I mean, like literally you've had your whole life change. Yes. I mean, you, you sold the building, you sold the business, the coffee shops, and then you moved your house and like, (laughs) so. It's been a very mild year. Yeah. Yeah. didn't do anything. And you, you sold the building in the coffee shops in August of last year? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not even a year in. How's, how's retired life? <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel like retired life. I think um, it's really weird to have... What does that mean, doesn't feel like retired life? Because, like, are you... Because I know I'm going to do something else, so it feels like a pause, like an interruption. Okay. Do you have, like... Do you have a time horizon? Or is it just, like, whenever I feel inspired? Um, mostly whenever I feel inspired. But I think... I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. Really? Do you have like? Do you have ideas? Or you're like, ooh. <laughs> I do have ideas, um, but I'm giving myself lots of time and space to decide if it's just interesting today or if it's going to be interesting for a long time. So, kind of letting the ideas pass pass by me, and if it stays interesting, then I'll explore it a little more. And also realizing that it might be a lot of little things and not just one big thing. So. What are like? Cause <laughs> okay, so that's really interesting. <laughs> well, I think, look, most people, um, you know, before they turn 40, don't sell a business, let alone a business really? in a building. Like, no, it's pretty, I mean, <laughs> I know that you just think it's normal and I'm doing the same, Everyone but like, I know is doing it. yeah, <laughs> but I also think that it's pretty unique. We were talking about this the other day. Um, but I think it's really unique that you have a time and space before you are even at like middle age. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that you get to like explore these ideas. Yeah. And I know that so many of, I mean, you and I have had many seasons together um, where we've been super stressed out by our businesses and stuff and like mm-hmm. to just take a pause. Yeah. I think it brings you like face to face with, you've been talking your whole life about if I only had time, I would do this, 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 and this. Yeah. And then when you finally have time, you're kind of forced to 
to reckon with the, do I actually want to do that thing I said I really wanted to do if I only had time? Because I think we're actually pretty comfortable in our busyness. And Ooh. when we finally slow down, it's pretty uncomfy. And, like, no one told me that, like, trying new things was going to be uncomfortable. Because I was... Really? I was, like pretty good at what I did before and I had a, Great know, at it. some success and like some a little bit that some people knew who I was it was this lovely feeling and then you drop all that and you're trying new things for the first time and like you're kind of bad at new things when you first try them so it's like this very humbling experience of oh I'm a beginner again like I have to yeah. I don't know anything about this new thing and so I'm starting from scratch um and it's fun it's fun <laughs> to learn a new skill, and it's sure. fun to try something new, but it's also like, man, I used to be good at something, and now I'm just okay at a, at a, at a couple things. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it's, it's a kind of a strange thing to happen when you're in your late 30s, so. You said that you think it's more challenging, it's, it, we've become accustomed to, like, our pattern of going and going. Mm-hmm. Uh... When did you first experience the, like, hey, I'm not going and going, and oh, now, shit, now what? Yeah, I think um, it took me about, we, I sold the business, we sold the building, that happened within, like, four or five days, which was not planned, that just happened, and then we left five days later on a one-month road trip, and we just left, and that yeah. was wonderful, we spent time with y'all, Came to us. spent time in California, <laughs> Yeah. And when we got home, that's when it was like, oh. And so the first week home, I cleaned out every closet in my house and cleaned out the pantry and deep cleaned everything. And I was like, okay, the house is clean. Everything's at Goodwill. Now, right. now what do I do? I don't have any projects anymore. And I didn't, other than like wrapping up a couple things for the business, like I didn't have work. And so I had to start on more of a creative path of like, okay, what does this next chapter look like? And when you tell people in your life, like, oh, I sold my business, the first question is, what are you doing now? And I was... Oh, interesting. I, uh, yeah, and the people that get it are like, when you say nothing, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah that's so good, good for yeah, you. Yeah, right. But the people that don't get it are like, oh. Why don't people get that? <laughs> like, is it, is it that they don't... I mean, and I'm asking you to speculate, and you may know. I mean, I don't know. Did you ask people, like, if they don't get it? Like, why I, don't they understand? I didn't ask, but I assume it's because we tie so much of our identity to what we do. Yeah. And it's really hard to find common ground with someone when they don't do anything anymore. Like, like when I would tell people, oh, I own a coffee shop. They'd be like, oh, my God, I love coffee. Have you been to this shop? What shop do you own? There's always, like, another question. It's a conversation starter. Yeah, but when you tell people, like, I just sold my business, and now what's next <laughs> or I, I one time said I'm following my creativity and I remember just someone stared at me like are you okay like <laughs> like there's something wrong with me <laughs> so well and I think that it's interesting because you and I have you know similar upbringings in religious communities and trauma from that and then we have similar journeys in like our post yeah. what we're up to but I think it's that whole thing of like yeah we you are actually embodying being a human being. Yes. That's a human doing. <laughs> right. And I, but I, that's really interesting. You know, I was thinking about uh, Ram Das has, he talked about doing in uh, New York in the 60s before, I think before he met Maharaji uh, in 67, but maybe it was after. But they had these B ends. Did you ever hear him talk about no. this? So, okay. So, so they, <laughs> You're going to love this. I know. <laughs> so, so they had this idea. They're like, we're going to do it on uh, Easter Sunday mm-hmm. in, in Central Park. And we're just going to do a B-in. And they talked with, he like talked with um, somebody from the Parks and Rec Department. And, they, and she was like, how many people are you expecting? And they said 10,000, which they ended up having like 15 thousand it was nuts wow. right and they were like uh, she goes you know we can have this easter egg hunt for the kids and we can have this concert over here for the adults and all this stuff and he's like no it's a bn like we're not gonna entertain ourselves we're just gonna be and she just didn't have like a category or a yeah. box for that idea and she's like well what are they gonna do <laughs> like all these people what are they gonna do and he's like we're just gonna be <laughs> <laughs> 
and it freaked her out, yeah. you know, and like they really couldn't get it um, because it's so different. And I think that that is kind of like what you're up to. It's like it's so unique. Yeah. To, no, I'm just just being just hanging. Yeah. About after about four months, I realized I needed a little bit of form for my. To, oh, really? To help kind of hold in my formlessness. Like I needed, like okay, I need something that on this day I show up and I do this thing, and like I need a little bit of structure in my life. Yeah. The it was really good to have the unstructured time for a, for a while. while to do what I yeah. wanted to do and see people and catch up with people and read books and write and do all of that. But after a while, I was like, I need it. I need something. And so it's like, but I can still continue to explore my curiosity. And so I took a pottery class and I'm nice. doing my yoga teacher training and I'm just like learning more about things that are interesting to me. So what, um, I feel like this has been like a, just you and me like talking on the phone, video chatting with, your hubby and my wife and everything it's I feel like this has been a season where you're seeing through so much of like the cultural stories we've been told oh, yeah. and uh I know that before you sold the building and the business you were meditating you were mm-hmm. reading you were doing like spiritual practices to keep you grounded yes and you feel complete, like just being at your house for the past few days, you feel totally different grounded wise. Like you're a different version of Jan in like a very cool way than I've ever experienced before. You just, it feels like you're breathing really calmly. (laughs) Do you feel that on the inside or is that just, am I projecting? No, I feel that a little bit. And I think part of it is I don't have to be anything for anyone right now. Mm -hmm. No one's relying on me to be boss leader or to be you know showing up in a certain way for the community and I'm just existing right now I'm not really like having to be anything for anyone and yeah so it's like taking a lot of pressure off like Ooh. I yeah I can if I want to take a day and just stay home all day I can do that like I was sick recently and I was able to just be home and rest and I didn't have to cancel things and get people to cover shifts and like work while I was trying to recover like it's just a different level of Exhaling, yeah, like peacefulness um, when you don't have a million and one things going on, and so yeah. I yeah, I would agree with that. I feel a lot more at ease, a lot more settled. I that's such a and I wonder if and you may not have this. Is there a thing? Because you again, you haven't even been doing this for a year, so yeah. it's not like you've been doing it a long time. Right, and I need to remind myself of that. It's only <laughs> it's only been eight months. Yeah, <laughs> but that's still. Eight months longer than most people that are, like, listening or watching or whatever. Is there a thing when you think for yourself that you would go back and be like, if you could go talk to Jan from two years ago, mm-hmm. is there something that you have learned in the past eight months that you would be like, hey, I'm going to impart this wisdom to you? <laughs> I mean, there doesn't have to be. I'm just curious because, again, it is yeah. a cool thing you got going. I don't know. I think it's like... The things that fall away and become unimportant, I didn't think that would happen so quickly. Oh. And like, because my life was totally wrapped up in this business and this building and getting it all to work and, you know, yeah. getting, making it the best place to work possible and supporting everyone and, you know, like being the boss lady. And yeah. like, I was surprised how quickly all of that fell away and I just didn't care anymore after I sold. And it's like, I cared, but like, I realized it wasn't my responsibility more, and I think accepting that, like, the nature of life has changed. Yeah. Like, that's been the biggest lesson. And also, like, acknowledging whenever there's a change, there's always a little bit of grief. Even if it's it's (laughs) good grief, you know? Like, there's always a little bit of, like, oh, like, some days I miss that. I miss the Mm. busyness, and I miss the purpose, and I miss the community, and, you know, like, it doesn't mean it all just went away. Right. Um, But, yeah, I think there's that change is good, change is necessary, change is natural, and that holding on too long to a good thing is not helpful, you know? Right, right. And so if you feel like the time when something has passed, it's time to let go and try something new and not fight it anymore. You, you touched on this briefly. How has the extricating yourself from identifying with the doer or the business owner, like the person that's 
well respected because you've created jobs and right. you, they see your like how what's that experience been like for you um i think it's really taught me like that i'm very lucky to have the people in my life that are in my life because they care about me janice as a human yeah and not about me janice the business owner or me mm. janice that does this thing or whatever and so it's just been interesting to see the people that have stuck around and the people that haven't yeah um so that's been interesting but other than that i don't i don't know I, like how has my identity changed or i mean i would be interested in that too <laughs> but i yeah I mean, I mean i think that it's something that that i have recognized in myself is like the way that I tie my identity to the narratives that other people have put around me. Mm -hmm. Successful business owner makes money, does, you know, like, and I, in my own process of like selling more than half the businesses that I own right now, I'm just like, huh, that's going to be an interesting identity to like not have for that, you know? And, and I'll still own some other ones, but it won't, like the biggest ones are going to be gone. Yeah. And so it'll be it'll be a very different vibe and I'm just curious what that looks like for you. Yeah, I think it's like who is you're like forced to reckon with who is the you behind the you that you've projected for everyone to see in the yeah. world and so yeah, it's like who am I without this thing that's been for me most of my adult life I've owned this business and had this I don't know way of being in the world right um, and so I've had to like really come to terms with okay is just Janice enough like Ooh, is, damn. is Janice without you know this idea of success or this idea of like doing a big thing like yeah. I said a lot of people expected like oh the only reason you're leaving behind this big thing is to do something even bigger it's like no the reason I'm leaving it behind is for like my health and sanity and yeah. you know to like have right. a good life um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's definitely fundamentally changed and I think I've had to accept, yeah, this is who you are without that. Yeah. And I remember having this thought like some, sometime in the middle of like selling the business, I was like, okay, at the time we were thinking about moving and, or buying a house like in a really magical place and the whole thing. And I was thinking, man, you're going to sell your business. You're going to move across the country. You're going to be in this beautiful house. And there you are. It's right. It's still going to be you. Even Ooh. if you get everything you want, it's still right. going to be you. And so how have you made peace with you? You. Right. And so that was, I don't know, you can change the environment, you can change the packaging, you can change whatever, but at the end of the day, it's just you there. And you're the only one you got, so. Yeah, yeah. and I think, I think that that's like one of the the challenging things about anything where you're like, well, when I do this thing. Yes then everything's going to be okay. And it's like, no, you just created new problems for yourself. Yes. <laughs> and, and sometimes like you're ready for the new problems. It's just like, I'm done having this be this my problem. problem. Yes. And, and I, I've, I've, that's when I knew it was like time to sell. I was like, I'm done having these be problems yes. and I'm more interested in having new problems, you know? And so, yeah. And it, if you think about it like that and you're like, this is not my salvation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it can't be. Right. Because we all do that. Like putting, projecting our future, our happiness into the future. Like, right. When I get this or when I'm with this person right. or when I have this space or when I have sure. this job or this notoriety or whatever, fill in the blank thing, then, then I'll be happy, fulfilled, good, whatever, content. But the reality is, is like, if you can't be that already, then right chasing after some elusive thing isn't going to help you. I'm interested for you to talk about, because there was, there was certainly a time mm. in, in the, the many years that we've known each other that you were really pushing hard mm. for, hey, let's open, open up more locations of the coffee shop. Let's franchise. Let's, you know, like there was a real like drive yeah. and, and world domination sort of feel, and you guys, I mean, it wasn't bad, it was, it was good, it was good, and, and there was also the, a season where, where you and Matt both really pursued, like, how, how many other businesses can we put our fingers in, and, and kind of, like, wrap our, and it was, it was not 
out of it didn't feel like it was out of anything that you were trying to like make yourself whole it it almost felt like it was just like uh, you were following your curiosity you were trying to figure out like what how big how far like how much space you wanted to take up but it feels like that journey has been had hey, tried I looked over the edge because you did some expansions for real mm -hmm. and then you're like mm, not this yeah I think for a while I actually did feel like I had something to prove mm. um, like, <laughs> hard relate <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like if we can grow and grow and grow and be this big thing and then I kind of realized that wasn't the way I operated and that wasn't right. who I was and so it took like a reckoning of like no you're more of a relational community person you're not mm. a big giant open this location that location and you don't know your staff and all like that's not who I am and I figured right. that out over the course of some bad decisions but I figured it out and I'm yeah. thankful for that but then I think maybe it was the pandemic and when the pandemic happened it was first of all I had to reckon with what if we lose everything because that was on the table for well, a while and everybody did yeah, I mean I, we didn't know. I yeah I did we didn't know we didn't know yeah. we didn't know there was going to be all of the relief money we didn't know right. there it was gonna eventually fizzle out. Um, I mean, we had we had we clients had no just, we had clients just drop like flies. Yeah. I mean, like overnight, people were like, "I don't know if I'm gonna pay my bills next month. I don't know. I'm yeah, certainly not gonna pay you." Yeah. We're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, I mean, we have contracts. They're like, "We don't care." Yeah. Oh, oh god. <laughs> yeah, we went. I mean, we went to take out only overnight. And, right. I mean, our sales dropped to twenty five percent of what they were for about two months, and it was like, "Oh, we had to furlough staff." And you know, yeah. and everyone's complaining about being bored at home, and I was running all over creation and just trying right. to survive. Right. And trying to keep my businesses alive. Sure. And trying to keep my staff paid and, you know, all the things. But once all that settled down, and it was just like, okay, like, we're here, and we can't do anything. Right. And I think I kind of realized, like, what's important. Mm -hmm. And I realized, like, I've been doing a lot of things just because I didn't want to miss out on something good. Yeah. But when everyone was home doing nothing, it's like, maybe it's okay. Like, I kind of like this. I kind of yeah. like doing less. I kind of like not being in 15 places a day. I kind of right. like this feeling. And, yeah, I think that kind of informed the next step, which was maybe you don't need to own three yeah. to five coffee shops. Maybe you right. just want to be and you want to write and you want to be home and you want to be outside more and <laughs> you want to travel more and, you know all of those things so you said something that I really appreciated I don't think that you and I have talked about this enough but I'm I'm really interested in your response you mentioned like hey you realize that you're more of a community builder and less of a mm -hmm. like let's make this really expansive Total and world domination. yeah <laughs> and and I think that that's you know it's interesting I was talking with our friend Nathan uh, today at an event and he was talking about something similar of like you have to know yourself enough for your business to like because yeah. you can have a great idea but it's not for you to go execute on yes and 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 someone else may not have any ideas and it may be that idea that they should pick up yeah. and so i'm curious like what's your what is your practice for self-understanding like what do you you know, I mean, we've when talked... When it comes to a good idea? No, 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 just like... I think it's very insightful that you went, you know, my thing is building community. Mm. Like, that's what I want to do, and I want to create and build community that way. And most people that I talk to don't have those sorts of insights mm. on themselves. And I'm just curious, like, what is your practice to get there? Oh, interesting. Um... <laughs> to get there I think I've just learned who I am over the years and I think so you think it's just like I think time? The, the franchising thing really taught me some lessons about this <laughs> who you are <laughs> and I realized like yes, we had did. one franchise and we're on the verge of opening a second and I realized oh to be a franchise owner you kind of have to like force your will on people to yeah. keep the brand cohesive you just can't let people do what they want you can't let people follow their passions and, like, it doesn't really work to have a community coffee shop that's franchised because right. it, it's all, so very specific to the community and it has right. to change and kind of ebb and flow a little bit for that community. And so we, like, let one franchise go and then the other one, I just, I cut them free and I was like, 
I'll consult with you, you can be your own coffee shop, but this is not a good model for me because I'm not going to tell you what to do with your business. Yeah. And that's not who I am. And I remember that was a hard decision to make because it was very like, I felt like I was taking steps backwards and I had told all these people, opening this other location. Sure. But once you make peace with like, you know what, people don't care. They might care for like three minutes, but then right. it's fine. And they might ask you a question about it and you can just say, you know what, that wasn't for us and that's okay. And like, you don't yeah. know anyone in exploration. Right. And so right. it's okay to do what's right for you right. and what's right for your business. And so that was probably one of the better decisions I've made <laughs> <laughs> in business. Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't know. I just decided I don't need to be what everyone else thinks I should be. I can be what I want to be. And maybe that's a lesson that just comes with doing it for a while or seeing seeing people do it ways you don't want to do it or self-realization of, oh, this isn't working for me. I'm miserable. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. When you think about, you know, because you, you started your first coffee shop in 10? Uh, oh, nine. Good God. <laughs> right in that sweet spot of recession. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I know you, like, Every other entrepreneur that I've ever talked to is, like, fighting to survive, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a certain level of, like, you just do what you have to do to make it work. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think that it's interesting because you were able to get enough success that you were like, I don't have to do that anymore. Mm. And you yeah. did, you did like, do sorts of, like, crazy things during 2020 because you're like... Oh, yeah. We all did. Yeah, I mean, it was, just, it was just the time. And at this point, you're just like, I mean, I don't need to do the crazy thing anymore. Yeah, I can. Which is weird, because we've been <laughs> in, like, fight or flight, like, just work, 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 work. And then when you're right. done, work a little bit more and fight to make it work. And I don't know, something changed. We had a little, a little bit of a break, I think, before the pandemic. Things were kind of smooth and... The business was making money, and, like, people were happy, and then we decided to open the second business, and it was like, oh, and build a huge commercial building, and that added the stress on again, right. and then after, let's see, three months after we opened the second location and the commercial building, the pandemic hit. Right. And so it was this whole reallocation of, oh, we thought this was going to be this way, and it's actually this way, and it right. was supposed to be, like, we're working towards this goal, and then we're going to have all the success, and then it was... Oh no, we might right. lose it all. You right. know, we were really close to losing it all multiple times, um, which is not a good feeling. Um, no. But we worked really hard to to stay afloat and like Matt. I mean, Matt, like with that building, he did so much work himself because we ran out of money. <laughs> yeah. We ran out of money to build it, so right. he had to finish things. He built the stairs and he wired the whole. Which building. is nuts, by oh, the way. Yeah, built the cabinetry and installed all the appliances. <laughs> and like because we had to there was no right. other option right um, we had to make it work and so I think it's really easy to look at someone who's like maybe met some success now right and be like oh wow how did you get on that you're only 30 well whatever yeah right and it's like oh you didn't see you know the 80 hour weeks and the 100 hour weeks and all of the time and and also how we almost lost it all so many times so many times so many times well that's and I think that a Business owners and entrepreneurs don't talk about that enough. Mm -hmm. Like, there have been times where I was like, we like to I... like, oh, yeah. that time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, we, you know, like most people, like, we we had a really, like, kick in business in 2019. 2020 hit, and it was like, oh, no. And yeah. we really didn't... I remember that. Yeah, I mean, like... You, yeah. And we really didn't see it pick up again until January, February of 21, and then it was like, oh... And now we're on a rocket ship. And then it was like crazy. Yeah. But the, but it always happens. Like you always get to the, and even the, the people that are like, oh, I just went from here to success. And it's like, that's not real. No. <laughs> it's a lot more slow and steady. And it kind of sneaks up on you sometimes, I think. It's like, oh, it's actually working now. How did that happen? Yeah. And it's weird when it works. Yeah, like really it is well. weird when it works. Yeah. And you're like, well, hang on a second. Well, and I also think that there's that thing, too, where it's like the, the overnight success. It's it's like every band that we've ever really loved. Like, yeah. they played in dank coffee shops and basement bars. Oh, and yeah, like, with people talking over them all night. Yeah, and, like, no one cared. And then they released an EP, and 
that they had already released multiple albums and they were small releases, but they released an EP and somebody listened to it and then it got onto a TV show and then boom. I mean, I remember that happening with the Civil War. Mm -hmm. like, I saw them at Jam and Java with <laughs> Rachel when, you know, it was like a venue that seats a hundred people and they were the opener and there were 50 people there and the people that played after them were not our favorites, but like, no one knew who they were, and then, no joke, like, less than a year later, eight, nine months later, they had a song in Grey's Anatomy, and Grey's Anatomy was, like, massive at the time. Mm. And they went from playing in these tiny venues to playing in massive, ridiculous yeah, venues. Yeah, I remember seeing them at the House of Blues. Yeah, which is, I mean, thousands of people there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so it's, like, weird, because it's the same with entrepreneurship. I mean, like, well, that's diff this is different. We just work really hard, and it's, like, <laughs> well, the, the guys in the band work really hard, too. Oh, yeah. And it was one of the things that uh, I've talked about with a lot of entrepreneurs is I'm like, how many of you, like how, how many businesses do you think do a million dollars plus in a year? Mm. And I hear like crazy numbers or like 50% of people, like businesses or like 80%. And these are always people that are not doing a million. Mm. And I'm like, it's only 7% of all businesses in the country ever, ever do a million dollars. That's crazy. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, and it's way smaller depending on your industry. Oh, yeah. You know? We, we never hit that with two shops. Yeah, and it's like, but you had two fully functioning shops, and they were like, you know. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, like, we see the, <laughs> we see the real golden assholes that are like, this is my private jet, and <laughs> this is my Bugatti, and it's like, okay, cool, man, you know, and, uh, but that's not real. Real is like, hey, I put together this small boutique firm, whatever, we do one and a half million a year. And yeah, if you're doing one and a half million, it's like, yeah, you're probably in the top 7% of yeah. all businesses in the country. That's nuts. Like, it's a yeah. big deal. And the food industry, just to be profitable at all, is kind of an anomaly. I think people don't realize that either because they're buying oh, yeah. these $7 coffees and thinking like, oh man, they must be raking it in. But the food industry is notoriously hard Most people aren't, they're not turning a profit. They're barely breaking even, which is why restaurant owners are always so stressed out. It's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And we, I, I mean, we have uh, an agency that does like design and social media and stuff is one of the, the agencies that I own and, and they work with a, a brew pub and they are one of the anomalies of like, mm -hmm. but they're, they're in a great location. We've been doing their marketing work for a long time. Yeah. Like. They've invested heavily in marketing and branding and, like, things that were going to make them more money. And, you know, when we started working with them, I think they're, they're sub a million. And this year they're going to do 2.2, .2, which is wow. fantastic. That's amazing. Um, but, you know, there's, there's – and the guy that owns it's, like, super smart and, like, a great guy. He's one of my very good friends. Um, and he also got some lucky breaks. Because yeah. we all do. We all do. <laughs> Sweden. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think, uh, Jan, just totally shifting gears because I think it's going to be fun. Okay. What, uh, what do you think we're up to as humanity here? Like, what, what are we doing in life? You know, like, what is this thing? Because again, like, I, you know, when we talk about doing this podcast, uh, in the interview, like one of the things that we never talk about as business owners is like, what is your philosophy, your religious beliefs, like your thought about yeah. what we're doing? And it had, but it has such a meaningful impact yeah. on how you engage with the world and your beliefs have changed yes. <laughs> dramatically <laughs> and you're less, and they probably will continue and they probably continue to change. But, but you're, I also watched you go and myself as well, go from being like wicked, 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 stressed out with different religious beliefs mm -hmm. to being way less stressed out, even if we were still stressed out while you were owning the businesses and stuff but i'm just curious like i would love for you to talk about what you think we're up to what like, you do as, as humanity yeah like what what because <laughs> we're all doing this thing together yes and it, we pretend like it's it's alone yes <laughs> and the reality is we're all like in the same anthill and it's like what are we doing you know Yeah. And learning to be 
present is what is and like chasing after joy as much as you can. Mm-hmm. And I think in being content with where we're at, even if it's in a stressful time or even if we're working, you know, like a minimum wage job or even if we've just sold our business and we don't know what's next, like wherever we are learning that we already have it all. Yeah. And there's nothing else outside of us that can add to that. Um, yeah. And so I think that's what I've been finding is like we chase all these things thinking they're going to bring us happiness and mm. we get them and it's like, oh, it's just another thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. And so if we can sit and be still and find contentment in really simple things like watching the birds outside or <laughs> the sun on our face or like the community of good people in our lives or... Yeah. You know, a great cup of coffee or an amazing glass of wine. Like, if we can find joy in the simple things, man, what a wonderful life we're going to have. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, I think, uh, for me, I'm, I, I am, I'm a recovering addict of meaning making, if that makes oh, any wait. sense. <laughs> okay, yeah, say, say more okay. about that, please, because that, that, that's good. I, I used to look for patterns and meaning and everything. If I could just weave a little bit of meaning into my life. Yeah. And if I could see where things were going and I could see how it all works together and weave some kind of like story or narrative around that, I would be like, okay, we're going to be okay because this hard thing I did, it matters because of this reason. Yeah. And then just, I'm <laughs> learning how to let that go and learning how mm. to just be like, yeah, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Maybe it's just a hard season. Maybe it's just a hard or season. Or maybe it's just a wonderful season and it doesn't mean the shoe's about to drop. You know, right. that's another one of like expecting bad things to happen, but just being present and like the very simple things that are like, for me, that's where the joy is. How do you cultivate that? Because there's a lot of, I mean, cause like, yeah. there's a lot of people that are like, that sounds cool. <laughs> I just need to make a sale this month or like, for sure. You know, like I remember when I was in the middle of trying to sell my business last summer and you know, it's an adventure. You never know what's going to happen. And what? There, <laughs> you, you know, there's some ups and some downs. And it, <laughs> we had gotten several offers and it looked like something was going to happen. And then it didn't. Right. And I ended up in the exact place I didn't think I wanted to be, which was managing a coffee shop. Like, my manager had left. I needed to step back into that role for a while. I was in Texas in the heat of the July summer, which is, for me, the worst thing ever. Yep. And... I was having to deal with all the little piddly things that I felt like I shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Yeah. And I remember one morning I got, I got woken up at like 6.30 from a barista and she was like, hey, I've been exposed to COVID. I can't come in today. And I looked at the schedule while I was still laying in bed and I was like, oh, there's no one to go in. Like, it's this is me. Like, this is oh. me going in. It's like, okay. And instead of being angry about it and being like, I can't believe I have to go work a stupid barista shift <laughs> and like do this thing and COVID and all of that. I was like, you know what? Today, all I'm going to do, like for eight hours, I'm just going to make coffee and talk to people. Yeah. And I drove to work and I had like this moment of like extreme okayness with what was. It's like, this mm. is, and I thought, man, I'm literally doing the thing I did not want to do. I am, <laughs> I am managing the shop, working barista shifts, taking yeah. a recall. It's hot as hell out. I'm melting right. in my car and I'm smiling. What is wrong? <laughs> and it was, but it was beautiful because it was like, man, I, I'm okay. Right. I, it's fine. Like, yeah. I, there's joy in this too, and I think sometimes when we're confronted with the things that we think are the worst case scenario, and it's like, this is fine. Mm-hmm. This is this can be good too, like, and we stop attaching to these desires that we have, and we just enjoy what is. For me, that's that's where the juice yeah. is. Like that's where the goodness is, and it takes sometimes being disappointed, or getting sick, or you know having a bad outcome, or having a weird thing happen in a relationship. Sometimes it takes all those things to get us to be present. So that's yeah. my my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's great. That's that's helpful. Yeah, I think you know it's it's one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot is like there's no good and bad. It's just yeah. what's happening just, and. Yeah. You know, as as I, like every business owner ever, have ups and downs and great things and sad things and whatever. Like, it's one of those, and I keep telling this to our crew, I'm like, 
uh, we just do what we do. Yeah. You know, like, just show up and just play the game. And play it impeccably, play it fiercely. Oh, yeah. And just realize that, like, you're still playing Monopoly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just Monopoly, it's fine, and you may lose this round. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. There's next round. Yeah. <laughs> but can you play it? Yeah. And that's really the game that we're up to. Yeah, and, like, I think even... I've learned that, too, with money. Like, chasing yeah. after security when it comes to how much money's in the bank account is, like, silliness. Yeah. Because when we had nothing in the bank account, I was worried. And now we have something in the bank account. And I am still sometimes get worried. And it's like, oh, the number changes, but the worry is, like... The worry's always a worry. It's always going to be there. Or right. maybe it won't be there. We need to, we need to learn that we're, there's never going to be enough to save us. You know what I mean? Right. But... Yeah, just accepting, like, yeah, that's there right now, and it might be gone tomorrow, and yeah. I cannot control that. There might be another pandemic. There might be a recession. There might be whatever, yeah. and you know what? We're going to be okay. Like, yeah, and we're I, still okay. And that's the part that I wish I could go instill in myself from a long time ago. Mm. Of like, hey, hey, dude, it's all going to work out. You know? But don't you think you needed to struggle through that? Like, didn't that make you who you are? I think that just like everything in my life, it has been you. I took something that was really challenging and it's been used for my growth and development. Mm. And with that, though, I was creating my own hell. Yeah. You know, it has to be this way. Right. I have to make this much money. I have to make this successful. And I have a very similar story to you where it was like, I definitely was trying to prove something oh, yeah. to myself. Of course we were. We were like 20. Yeah. 25. I don't yeah. Know. I was 25 when I started what my first... What else did we have to do? Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, you started popping out kids and that was like a whole other thing. But yeah, I mean like... No, but you're right though, Jan. Like it's... Yeah. It's like a developmental necessity in some way, I think. Yeah, we were talking about this too. It was like, you know, in your 20s you're figuring out who you are. Yeah. And then in your 30s you're like, this is who I am. Yes. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that in a juice box and suck it you know like this is who I am and I I do think that that makes a big difference for how you show up to your, for yourself yeah. how you show up for business so when you think about like continuing to not do a thing mm-hmm. I mean you're, you're doing things you're doing yoga training right, right. you're doing pottery you're, you're writing you're painting you're you know going to lunches you're, you're doing things <laughs> like you're you know <laughs> Having moon circles. Um, you make me sound really weird. <laughs> I mean, we're both really weird. Yeah, like, just lean in. Like, it's who we are. I, as you do those things, are you telling yourself not yet? Like, don't go do the next thing? Huh. I think something's happened in about the last month that I okay. feel like if, if the right opportunity were to show up, I would drive it. Oh, interesting. Um. But I also don't want to dive into some things just because I'm feeling restless. Yeah. And commit my, you know, five, next five or ten years to something that's just right. maybe just a good idea. Sure. Um, it has to be the right good idea. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. And so I've been, I'll have these ideas and I'll kind of let them simmer and I'll talk to friends about them and kind of do that whole thing. And then I'll see if it's still interesting a week or two later. And if it's still interesting a week or two later. Okay. Maybe I'll do a little more research. Maybe I'll look into it a little bit more. Maybe I'll think about how that would go with the lifestyle that I want to have moving forward and yeah. all of that. But yeah, I think um, the purposeful nothingness that yeah. I that I had, that was kind of 2022, yeah. uh, the end of 2022, and I was like, we're not doing anything until 2023. Nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> and now we're into 2023, and I'm doing some things, but none of them are like right. going to be hugely time-consuming things. It's just like, oh, this is interesting. I want to know more about that. Or yeah, I've always wanted to try pottery. Let's make some make some bowls. You know, that's fun. <laughs> make tactile. some bowls. That's tactile. Yeah. It's fun. And so I'm not gonna go off and be a potter. Like, but I, mean, <laughs> I had a blast making some bowls. Yeah. And I think not everything has to be. I think we have this tendency in the entrepreneurship community to like, if you're good at something, to make it a business. Right. Or if you're interested interested in something to make it a business, it's yeah. like maybe it's just a hobby. Maybe, maybe it's, it's just like a way you relax. Right. So 
yeah, I was thinking for like, maybe I'm going to be a writer. Maybe I'm going to like write sure. these things. And I think that might just be a hobby. And that's which okay. Is, yeah, which is lovely. Yeah, it's a great hobby. Um, yeah. And I've been learning a lot about myself and digging into my past. And, you know, it's been good. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not purposely not doing anything. I think I'm just waiting for the right thing to show up. But also not expecting it to, like, hit me in the face, you know, with its obviousness. Like, I'm going to. Right. Start just asking questions and talking to people, and I think I think the thing that I miss the most right now is like the community of the coffee shops that I had, and it was yeah. like seeing people and having these lovely interactions every day. And so I know whatever I do next, I need to be around people and just kind of oh, out, that's interesting. Out in the world. You think like physically being around yeah, people? Yeah, so like, I'm like I don't want to. You can do a digital, home. yeah. So that's that's helpful. That's though. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, I could, I mean, I, I enjoy the community building pieces mm-hmm. that I do. And I also am like so content just to like hang out and, and, and I think that that's one of the things that I've learned about myself is I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely more of like the, as I get older, I'm like, uh, I'm more and more introverted, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm like, yeah, maybe I would just like to walk around the garden and write today. Like, that sounds really nice. And, and it's lovely to have that option. Yeah. Like, if you need an introvert day or you need, yeah. you know, to have that option of just be home for a day. Yeah, it's really great. And, and I, so, like, I could never do the coffee shop thing. Because mm. I'd be like, ooh, you got to be in the op, like, in the space, yeah. especially when you first get started. And you're, like, making sure that customers are being taken care of and you're, like, following what you need to follow. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think that that's the interesting thing is, like, I was talking about it with another mutual friend of ours, and they were just saying, like, a lot of times you don't think about the business that you're, like, starting. You're like, this is a great idea. Right. And then you don't think about all the realities of the great idea if it, like, works. Yeah. And this is somebody that, like, seven-figure business. It worked, you know? And they're like, yeah, I just don't, but there's a lot of things that they don't love about it. Yeah. You know? And I think that's the benefit of like having this privilege of maybe having a second career at this point in my life is I know what I like now. And I know yeah. like what's fun for me and what's life giving for me and what my body needs and like all of that. And so I get to create whatever's next around those those needs and desires and I don't have to like make it work. Yeah. You know, like yeah. So that's I see that as a huge privilege. And I feel very lucky. There's a... The yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah. There's a book that I've been reading that I think that you would appreciate mm. by Arthur Brooks. And it's called From Strength to Strength. And he... I got it uh, a few months back, which is... I don't know if you've ever had this, but like sometimes I'll be like, I need that book and I don't know why. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I then, have a whole shelf of those. <laughs> And, and you get into it and you're like, huh, I still don't really know why. But then as you read it through time, it starts to make sense because you're chain- your subconscious knew that you were changed or had changed before your conscious mind is caught up. Yes. And so I started reading this book six months ago. I've heard of this book. Maybe we've talked about it. Before. We probably did. Okay. But it's basically like this idea of like, when do you... There are different times at different points where you stop being able to innovate in your sphere. Mm -hmm. And, like, so he goes through and talks about, like, your prime time to innovate as a physicist is, like, 24. And anything after 24, it's really hard to come up with any sort of innovation. Interesting. You can codify a lot of things and, like, examine your... And he does this with all different sorts of stuff, but there's, like, different ways for different people to achieve great results Mm -hmm. the reason why he wrote this book though was there's this long study that's been going on for a hundred years with harvard almost it started in the 1930s so we're like getting close and the study is about happiness Mm -hmm. and so it goes back to the joy piece yeah so what they figured out was people everyone in the u.s reaches like their peak happiness between 55 and 60 because okay. they know some stuff. Because they know some stuff. <laughs> usually have a little bit more money. The kids are out of the house. Yeah. Usually. Not everybody, but usually. 
But then there's a big divergence mm. between people that continue to stay at that level of happiness and people that stop. And that the only group that's, that starts to see declining happiness after 60 are high achievers. Oh, interesting. And so there's this thing where, like, to your point from the beginning of the, the chat that we're having is, like, you get to a place where you're like, wait, I can't achieve anymore. I can't, I can't keep the momentum. I can't be the doing. I just have to be the being. Mm-hmm. And when you can't achieve at a high level through like sheer grit, like we did in our twenties, it's just like work your ass off, yeah. deal with it, you know, like, and it's like, you can't do that anymore. People start to really struggle. And so I started reading this book. So I was like, I know that I'm one of those people mm. that like, if I get to later, I'm going to be like, man, what is this all about? And I'm going to feel sad. And so now as I'm like moving towards selling the businesses, I'm just like, his whole point was the people that find happiness in this space are people that start a new career. Mm-hmm. They, they launch something or they start going from, I'm going to achieve to I'm going to mentor, mm-hmm. you know, like they're like, my job is to give back yeah. and you have to find meaning in new ways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause before it was, you know, it's about making a name about right. doing the big thing and exceeding people's expectations which honestly are very low like for, yeah. for most women in the south the expectations are like here <laughs> so it's pretty easy to exceed them but still i don't yeah it's you have to shift from all of those things to just what's what's going to bring me joy what's what's good for the world what's good for humanity to flourish you know yeah and you're asking bigger questions Yeah, and I also think it's interesting to go, like, to have the realization that you had where you go from my goal is to achieve, to conquer, to make more, to have more, and to be like, yeah, I'm done playing that game, and you were done with that game years ago, yeah. and then you're like, I'm, I'm going to sell it, and so now, like, I'm even done with the the business owner thing is my identity, Yeah. and you're, you're going, okay, now my identity just is Jan what does Janice want to do, yes. you know? And, and that is a question that I wish I had asked myself earlier. Yeah. And you really have to, like, sometimes I reckon with, why did I start this coffee shop? Like, I had so yeah. much tied up with my identity and my religion and my place in the community and what I should be doing and what people expected me to do. I don't know if it's actually what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, and so I think about that now, and I'm, of course, very grateful for the experience, and most of it I loved, and I learned, man, talk about going to school, that yeah. was the greatest education you could ever hope to have was owning a business like that, but yeah, I'm like, man, was that even, did I want that, or did my ego want that? Right. Um, and so, yeah, now we get to ask different questions. Which is really interesting. It is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, is there anything else that you want to say? Feel good? Want to say more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, A, I love our friendship so much. And I'm so deeply grateful for you in that. Like, it, uh, it's very, very special. And I'm so thankful that I get, like, a courtside seat to, like, watch what you're up to personally, what Matt's up to personally, what you're up to together as a couple. And, thanks. no, thanks. <laughs> And like it's it's um, yeah. I mean, we we both had seasons now where one of us has gone first. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you did that for a long time. I did that for a long time, and I'm I'm. It's really cool to not have gone first this time, or like this. There's a go round where like you did something before I did, and it's really fun to watch you take time. And yeah. transform your mindset, which really feels like a transformation of who you are as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's, I think I've, I've known a couple of friends recently that have sold their businesses and like the number one thing I'm telling people is like, don't have a plan for what you want to do next. Just like plan to do nothing for a yeah. while and plan to know that that's okay. okay. Yeah. And yeah, breathe. Yeah. Because, man, owning a business is hard, and you're constantly on high alert 
all the time, and you don't right. even realize it. And so when you're not on high alert anymore, your body actually needs time to like figure out that you're safe now, and like, yeah, yeah. like that you're not, you know, about to get the phone call that's gonna change the course of your whole day or your whole week, or you're not, you know, on the edge of disaster anymore. And so you get to just relax for a little bit and see what it's like to be a normal human. Yeah. So. I love it. I'm excited for that for you. Thanks. Yeah, it'll be um, when it happens. It'll be a great time. Yeah. Great time. Well, thanks so much for letting me stay at your house yes, and come chat with you. <laughs> <laughs> My echoey podcast. house. I I love your echoey house is beautiful and like I told uh, the group that came over, I was like, it looks like a modern art museum, and I walked in and they're like, oh my god, it does. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. well awesome. thanks so much thanks.